Hi to all, how's it going? Welcome to this third part of the Raspberry Pi case tutorial. I would like uh, to start by addressing a small problem that I have with uh, comments under my video and that is that I get notifications uh, about some uh, comments but I can't see them uh, into the uh, comments thread. Uh, I'm really sorry about that if uh, I can't respond uh, to everybody but uh, it is really impossible it seems that the, the YouTube uh, algorithm uh, just uh, moderates them for no apparent reason and uh, please don't get upset uh, if you don't see a, a response. In one of these comments I was uh, asked uh, if it was uh, really necessary to create uh, the last uh, binder that we've done uh, in the last, uh, in the second part of the tutorial in, or in order to split the case. Well, it is not really necessary because um, the split function creates a binder of its own anyway, so we uh, could uh, just uh, select the extrusion and uh, the, uh, the various extrusions and uh, hit the split tool and uh, it would have uh, worked um, anyway. But I liked uh, the fact that we can have a clear image of the, of the complete geometry that uh, separates the, the plane and that's that. It is not really necessary to create it again uh, but uh, it is a nice thing to have uh, as a reference. So with this uh, out of the way, let's uh, let's uh, start our tutorial. With a lot of uh, concepts and uh, workflows uh, already established uh, in the last tutorials, I will try to fly through this uh, video a little bit faster. So let's start. First of all, what I want to create is another card for uh, uh, is another cut for the port on the side of the case, uh, the one that uh, reveals the GPIO um, header. If we hide for just a second our top part and the, the binder, you see that we have the GPIO and we have uh, and we want to give it uh, some way to access it. For this cut, I would like to have also some uh, tolerance, uh, let's say perhaps a one millimeter tolerance, in order for the various components to not get stuck. So we will create another geometry inside the separation plane uh, body to use as a cutting tool for the lat uh, lateral port. In order for our cuts to follow the, the position of the pie itself, I will always reference uh, this binder here, which is the binder of uh, the main board. So let's hide the pie model for a second. Perhaps the master case model also. Select uh, this face on the main board binder and let's create a sketch. I want to refer in some external geometry, which are these arcs here. Let's un unhide the geometry of our Pi. And I think that the cut opens um, quite well, so close the sketch. Pad it for 25 millimeters. Okay and let's unhide the geometry of our case. As you can see, our cutting plane intersects uh, the bottom uh, part of the case and we don't want that to remedy. I will give an offset to the sketch uh, in the Z direction and to do that we will use the attachment offset in the position. Let's give it a 5 millimeter offset. Yeah, I think that this looks quite right. Okay, now select this face and this face on our newly created geometry. We will create a fixed solid. I want uh, the thickness to be inwards and per, uh, one millimeter thickness for me works quite well. Hit OK. I want my cut to have a nice rounded shape so I will select first uh, the these inner edges and we will give it a fillet of 4 mm. With this done, I want to select the, the external edges and this time I want to fill it of uh, 5 mm to compensate for the thickness of our geometry. Hit OK. And now we are ready to use this geometry to cut the top, uh, the top part of uh, our case. In order to do that, we need to set the master case as an active body. So right click on, act on it and toggle active body. Let's select the last uh, fillet in the separation plane, the last feature of the separation plane. Hit the split tool and you can see that 
the split tool has created a bunch of new shapes in the tree structure of the master case. We will activate the ones that we, uh, that we need. So we need the port itself and the top part of our case. And you can see that the split tool has uh, created a, a cut for the tolerance uh, part also. So when modeling, this could uh, come handy for something. Okay, so now that we've uh, uh, cut uh, all our geometry as we um, desired, it is time to separate the different parts in um, independent bodies. To do this, we will need to select a split and then hit the create body and make it active tool. You will be asked uh, if you want to use the, the split as a base feature for this body, click yes. And if we take a look and hide our case, you can see that a new body was created that uses as a base feature the geometry of our selected split. We will go ahead and do the same with the top part and the door hinge thingy here. I want to make a new body based on the top part of the case. Hit yes at the prompt and another one based on the side door. Create a new body, hit yes at the prompt. Let's go ahead and rename our geometry. So this one I will rename it as bottom. This one I will re rename it as top and this one I will rename it as side door because we don't want to get to get confused uh, with the geometry I will change the color of the master case body so press ctrl d on your keyboard I will give it a bluish color and I will change also the color of our newly created geometry so select the three bodies Control D and I really like this orangey color here. Close and we're done. We have created three different separate bodies that uh, model the geometry of the bottom, top and side door of our case. I'd say that it is now time to go ahead and add all the details to our geometry. So let's hide the side door. Let's hide the top part. I want to hide my pie geometry also. Okay, so at this point, I, I don't know if this is a bug uh, or not, uh, either way I will uh, report it, but w using this kind of uh, workflow where we have a base feature as the starting point uh, for a body, the features that uh, are coming after it will often uh, misbehave if we don't create a genuine part design uh, feature just after the base feature which uh, actually is a shape binder so just to give an example if i create a sketch somewhere here and i try to uh, use the pad up to face uh, function it will fail instead if we go ahead and perhaps chamfer this, this edge here for 0 0.2 millimeters now that we have a genuine uh, part design feature, all the features that will come after it uh, will uh, function properly. I hope uh, this uh, made sense. So let's uh, go ahead and create some reinforcements for the bottom part of uh, our case. So with our bottom uh, body active, let's select nothing, create a new sketch. This time I can create it on the, directly on the XY plane. Hit OK. import some external geometry incident and with this we have a fully constrained sketch close the sketch let's turn to shadow mode with our last uh, sketch selected we will pad it for three millimeters hit ok 
So with our ribs done, I want to create the holes for our uh, screws that will hold in place the top uh, and the bottom uh, parts of our case while uh, securing in place the pie board itself. Uh, one thing that I haven't uh, considered is that the thickness of our bottom wall here won't be able to accommodate the whole uh, height of the screw head. So we will uh, remediate uh, to this by heftening a bit uh, uh, our pads. I will select the top faces of our pad. I will ma make a pad. I will reverse the direction. I want to make it up to face. And I will select the bottom face here. And I will give it a fit tolerance of perhaps one millimeter. Hit OK. And magically we have thicker pads. Let's create another sketch this time on the XY plane. We will import this external geometry. So E on your keyboard and a radius of shift R 1.26. Hit close. Let's pocket our sketch. Reverse the direction and through all hit OK and we're done. Now it's time to give space for the screw heads so select these four circles here. Create a shape binder and because the shape binder property make face is set to true it will create a full face. Now with the shape binder selected let's create another pocket reverse the direction if uh, needed and we will give it a tolerance of 1 millimeter. I want it to go for a length of 2 millimeters. Hit OK and we have the holes for uh, our screws. For this part if you don't already have the fasteners workbench uh, installed you need to go into tools add-on manager, search for the fasteners workbench and hit install. You will, will be prompted uh, to restart FreeCAD. After uh, you've uh, saved your, your work, restart FreeCAD and switch to the fasteners workbench. Select these four circles here. And hit the screw creation tool. Select the four screws. I want them to be an M.2.5 uh, screw. So let's inspect our geometry. I think that the last pocket needs to be a little bit wider so let's reopen it. And as a fit tolerance perhaps we will give it a 1.5 millimeters value. Hit OK. Let's unhide the pie geometry and inspect our geometry. Uh, of course we need the screws to be a little bit longer so in the length property we will change it to 8 millimeters and this pretty much should uh, sum up the creation of our bottom uh, part of uh, the case of course uh, we can go ahead and perhaps uh, chamfer various edges to give it a more a nicer look it is all up to you let's start now detailing the top part of uh, our case so we will activate uh, the body let's unhide it we will again uh, need to first make a part design feature in order to have the subsequent uh, features uh, work correctly go here and make a small chamfer of 0 0.2 millimeters again this is a bit of a workaround for a strange behavior that uh, link stage 3 has in this iteration so hit ok we need to import again some uh, geometry from uh, the pie. So I will select our main board and make a shape binder. Let's hide the main board. And while uh, we are trying to make the pads that will support the top part of our case, I will uh, try to explain a really important concept. Notice how I will not use the geometry of my bottom part as a reference to make features on the top part of our case and this is because we will hit the um, cyclic uh, reference uh, error. While doing the, this kind of uh, in-context uh, modeling um, it is important to follow the chain 
of uh, events and features that uh, led up uh, to our model this far. It is really important to use uh, some kind of external geometry as a sort of uh, master sketch reference. This is why we always reference the pi geometry or the separation plane geometry and we are not referencing geometry that um, is part of the top and bottom case because this uh, geometry stems from the master case body so with this being said let's uh, try to create the pads that will support the top part of our case let's hide the bottom part perhaps the button screws also I will hide the last chamfer, select these external edges here and I will create a new shape binder based on them. Let's control that our shape binder is full, ok, unhide the chamfer, we will do a pad and we will choose up to face. Let's select the face, hit ok and we should be pretty much done. And if we want to give it a small offset from the um, main board, we could go inside our pad, choose the binder and move it for a little bit in the Z direction. I think that 0.2 millimeters should be enough. Let's select the inner arcs of our main board. Create another shape binder. With this shape binder selected, Let's hide the mainboard binder. We will create the holes for the screws and I think that 6 mm should be enough. Of course I want it reversed and we can give it a small fit tolerance of tolerance. 0 0.1 mm tolerance. Hit OK. Reversed. OK. Let's unhide the screws and see if we are still correctly positioned. Check with the wireframe and we should be ok. I want now to create the ventilation cuts uh, on the top side of my um, case. So I will perhaps select this face. I will create a datum plane based on it and I will offset it in the Z direction for minus 5 millimeters. Hit ok. Select the datum plane. Create a new sketch. Close the sketch and we will pad it. We will pad it reversed, perhaps for 20 millimeters just to be sure. Now the important part here, and you will see the multi-solid feature of link stage 3 in action, the important thing here is to create a new solid. Hit OK and we have a new solid inside our top uh, part. The uh, new solid can be visible or hide it independently from uh, the last feature. Let's just uh, select the last pad. We will uh, create a linear pattern. I want it to be on the horizontal, on the vertical sketch axis. I want to reverse the direction and the distance perhaps of 30 millimeters. We should avoid hitting the lateral door and I want something like 8 occurrences. Let's try this, hit OK, inspect our geometry. We can always go back into our sketch and tweak its position. Now let's go ahead and try to give it a nice round shape to our cut geometry here. So I will select the datum plane, I will create a new sketch import some external geometry close now it is important to notice one th one thing the point where we have split it, uh, the history of our top body, it is here on pad 57. Notice how, how it is possible to hide or unhide these solids independently 
inside our main body. It is really similar to the way how different uh, bodies um, work instead uh, here we are working with different solids. We have the concept uh, of uh, the body tip. So the body tip with will be the feature that will be less used for the next operation that we will do because we want to cut our last pocket we want to use it as a cutting tool for the top part of the geometry which is this one and we can hide it or unhide it independently we need to set this feature as a body tip it is really kind of similar to the way a uh, toggle active body works. In order for this operation to work, notice, notice how I set my last feature of the top case as, as a body tip. And this means that the, the, the subsequent operation that we, operations that we will do will be performed on this feature of uh, our body. So select the last pocket bear in mind that the, that the operation will be performed on this geometry here which is pocket 040 hit the boolean boolean tool i want to make a cut and this way we have our new geometry we can hide this part of our pocket and to make things easier, we can right click on the top uh, part and enable auto solid group. This will make a lot clearer where our features are. Again, they can be enabled or disabled independently. I hope all this makes sense. It is kind of a difficult concept to explain in words. It's a lot simpler once uh, one gets uh, the hang of it. I will fast forward uh, now the creations, uh, the creation of the internal uh, ribs uh, of the case and uh, we will see how we are to create uh, then the connection between the side door and the top part. Let's create now some features common uh, to both uh, top and side, uh, uh, top and bottom parts uh, of our case. So we will hide our top part, double, double click in the tree view on the bottom uh, part so it is active. Let's select this face. We will create a sketch. I want to import some external geometry. Let's close the sketch. We will do the same on this face also, so create a sketch. Now with the two sketches done, let's select the first one. I want a pad for one millimeter, okay? The same for the second sketch, so pad, one millimeter, okay. And now I want to create the corresponding uh, cut on the top part, so I will double click on it. It is still hide it, but because it is active, we will select this face here and this face here and create a new sh shape binder. Remember that we've talked uh, about uh, the danger of the cyclic dependency um, error. So in order to avoid that, we will select our pad and we will change its bind mode from synchronized to detached. 
to learn uh, more about uh, the different uh, bind modes you can read the tooltip and heavy detached uh, means essentially that uh, we've uh, referenced it uh, for just one time and it is like uh, a record for this binder the problem with it uh, with uh, having uh, a binder as detached uh, is that the um, modifications uh, to the previous geometry won't uh, drive uh, the binder won't, uh, won't modify the position or the geometry of the binder so be aware that from this point on modifications in the previous history of the tree won't affect this binder in particular in particular and you can see that it changes the color of the icon too so uh, be, uh, be aware of this um, quirk now that we've uh, created uh, our binder we can hide the bottom part and hide the top one select the binder and we will do a packet hit ok and we have our corresponding cut on the other side now that we're on the top part I want to make a nice chamfer on this uh, top edge here and I will select some appropriate edges chamfer and perhaps a 0 0.5 millimeters value would be enough so okay and we need to invent ourselves some hinge for the door side door here so to do this I will select this edge I will create a datum plane I will rotate it around the y-axis by 90 degrees and move it in the x direction I think yes by 6 millimeters hit ok we will <coughs> we will uh, use this edge here again as a support for another datum plane rotate it by 90 degrees and move it in the y direction by 6 millimeters oh sorry in the x direction by 6 millimeters okay select the first uh, datum plane create the sketch I will import myself some geometry let's close the sketch I will pad it symmetric to plane perhaps 3 millimeters ok let's do the same on the other side so we create a new sketch select the first datum plane let's create a new sketch import this external geometry let's pad it for 3.5 millimeters and symmetric to plane hit ok and do the same on the other side so we will create a new sketch now I want to select these edges here and uh, give them a nice chamfer nice fillet so it will be 0 0.2 millimeter okay and I will try to chamfer these edges also okay so I, I'd say that uh, we are done with the top part also so it is time to move on to the side door now the first thing that I want to do with the side door I want to give it a nice chamfer around all these edges let's give it a 0.5 millimeters chamfer 
it okay now that we have a genuine power design feature on in our uh, side door body we can start creating the hinge mechanism to do this we will um, use as a reference the sketches that um, were used to create uh, these two knobs here on the top side uh, body so I must go down and hunt them they think it is this one and this one create binder a binder will be created with uh, faces uh, between the the edges of the of the sketch but we can switch the pro uh, property make face face to false okay in this way we have a nice binder that uh, binds to those two sketches select this hit the U key for two times I want to hide my top part now that I have my binder I will create a datum plane by three points so select this vertex here this vertex here and this one here let's create a shape um, datum plane hit ok we will create another one in the proximity of this one here we have our two datum planes we can now start to sketch on them so select the datum plane then create a new sketch let's import some external geometry close the sketch and let's add it symmetric to plane for six millimeters in order to have a bit of heft bit of material to work with let's check with the geometry of the top side of the case and we, I think we are pretty much okay so select the datum plane again let's start with the first one create a new sketch we will use the carbon copy tool and copy the geometry of the first pad that we've made close and this time we want to make a pocket I want it to be 3.2 millimeters I think if, if I remember correctly and symmetric to plane okay let's do the same on the other side so let's check with the geometry of the top side and I think we can get away with a 2.1 millimeter radius here because the sketch that we've uh, used for the pockets are a carbon copy of this sketch and this uh, sketch here um, after the modification of the first two they will follow as dim dimension I will now select this datum plane I will create another sketch and let's just hide this geometry I want to import some external geometry and I want these edges here close the sketch and now we will pocket through all and symmetric to plane this gives us a nice a nice cut here now we will create another sketch let's just hide this datum plane I will import my external geometry close now it is time to pocket so we will try 4.5 okay let's do the same on the other side so select the datum plane create a new sketch now I want to fillet the inner edges I will hide this datum plane also and perhaps this one also uh, the shape binder also because we don't need it uh, anymore so select this edge here I don't really remember but I think it was 0 0.5 millimeters let's just go and check with the top side so to match with the geometry that we have on the top side of our case we need to make our pad longer a little bit longer than 3.5 millimeters our pocket and the fillet was 0 0.2 millimeters so let's just go here and make the 
pocket 4 millimeters. We make this pocket again 4 millimeters. And now the fillet will be 0 0.2 millimeters. Okay. Now I want to create some ribs, uh, some reinforcement uh, ribs, ribs underneath our door. So I will create a sketch on this face. Now that we've uh, created uh, our sketch, we will pad it for 12 millimeters. Okay, we will create another sketch on this face. And with this sketch, we will pocket through all. Hit OK. And we can chamfer some edges to give it a little bit of a nicer aspect. So let's chamfer it for one millimeter, I think could work. Okay, so let's take a look at our geometry until now. I thank you for staying till the end. I realized this was a long one and perhaps a uh, bit of a confusing tutorial but we've do used a whole lot of uh, free CAD link stage 3 features i really hope uh, this was helpful and in, in the next uh, episode we will do an um, assembly free assembly of our, our case we, and we will give some finishing touches thank you for staying till the end and i'll see you in the next one